A little has ever remained constant. Empires, languages, religions, fads and ideologies all have risen steadily and eroded away just as quickly as the fickle passing sands of time. Amidst all of these historical passerbys, however, one juggernaut of the very human psyche has endured, the board game. The first, Senet, was forged thousands of years ago in the scorching Egyptian desert, created as a game for the divine pharaohs that ruled the Nile. Though newer games grew to be different in a form and strategy, the key components lasted, a board and its pieces. This simple formula, though, can match up with the technological heavyweights. Today, both the video games and mobile devices have rapidly expanded market shares, a trend that spells trouble for the time-tested games of the past. In light of the sheer capacity of new devices, board games may soon represent a dying and endangered breed. One problem is that board games of today are far different from their older, more traditional counterparts. Money. You buy some land and houses too, you make it rich from the rent or you'll be flat broke when the mortgage is due. Two good reasons that Milton Bradley makes the best games in the world. Get Racco and easy money. In all new Monopoly Empire, you can buy and own the world's top brands like Xbox. I wanna, I wanna own it all. I wanna Transformers. I wanna own it all. I wanna. And beats by Dr. Dre. I wanna own it all. I wanna own it all. All new Monopoly Empire. When you own the world's top brands, you own it all. The board game of today advertises glitz and glamour, while that of the past focuses on the fun of family and friends. I think it's really the experience of just like it's not really the board game. It's something to do with your friends instead of just sitting there. Something like it's like an activity to do with your friends sitting around each other, like being face to face, and it's kind of like a bit like a fill or something there in between you guys that connects like the players while they're just like having fun and chilling, yeah. Uh, I probably play the board game because of just kind of sticking down the, my roots and playing old fashioned games, I feel it's a lot more fun than playing like video games. Like video games. Because you have so many digitized things, I think you're already starting to see, and that people consider now hipster, I hate that word, but to kind of push back is and do stuff old fashioned, and that's, that's why you're actually seeing a brief uh, jump in the past year and a half or so, two years, in print and newspapers subscriptions. Instead of had a steady, real bad fall and actually kind of spiked a little, nowhere near what it's ever going to be again, but you have that, that I want to connect on a different level. Recent sales suggest that the general public is more interested in the idea of a video game. On Kickstarter, a funding platform for new ideas, video game donations far surpassed those of board and card games over the past few years. Less than 10 years ago, digital games had less than a percent of the total market share. Today, this slice is growing by 20% per year. I think the problem is, first of all, as I said, you need imagination because you know, like, there's no animations, there's no, like, actual, like, gameplay elements other than rolling a dice and moving, or, like, some games are card games, and we have, like, they have cards and stuff. I think that just makes it unappealing and boring to some people because right now a lot more people, like, have you seen, like, action movies and stuff are popular, and people, like, just fast paced, like, just things that, like, keep them involved non stop. And I think a board game is just too slow for most of the modern audiences. Just like I said before, the technology, and especially um, young people like to play games like Modern Warfare and stuff like that. So, yeah. I think because people are starting to keep everything with technology, so, like, everything's moving. And I find that kind of a bad idea because people, like, young people are starting to grow up with that and they're getting addicted to it. I think kind of, like, just it kind of brings you into the game, like, these days are having, like, the 3D reality games, I mean, they literally put you in the game in your own house, so I think just incorporating the game into your eyes is, I feel. No, video games are fun, they're interesting, you're told to like them. Video games flashy. When you're a kid, you like excitement, it has noises, and, you know, there's animation. Probably definitely play the video game, I mean, board games, you just play them once, and, like, they're just fun for, like, quick game, but they get it repetitive really fast, but like video games, you can keep playing them over and over again, just like because of computer technology and stuff, there's so much more that can be accomplished by a game than they can be accomplished by just like paper and a, like a cardboard. The influence of digital technology is so pervasive that board games have even begun digitizing some simply to stay afloat. 
Consumers, though, have not been any more enthusiastic. The Monopoly app holds a mildly average rating of 3 out of 5 stars on the App Store, and it makes little revenue compared to the real thing, according to the Parker Brothers. On the other hand, increased digitization has led to huge profits for the video game industry. According to Forbes, Microsoft was able to sell over 3 million Xbox One units only in a few weeks after its release, and Sony sold 7 million PS4s in the same time frame. The success of the digitized entertainment should suggest that board game turned apps should also generate considerable revenue, yet their failure to do so indicates something inherently wrong in the board game model, that the digital age doesn't necessarily mask the slow and lengthy games of the past, and it's tough to go back to the stone age after having tasted technology, whether it's a board game or a book. Uh, we're becoming more digitized. What the, the term you're going to use now is um, digital um, youth, and it's because they're digital natives. Uh, if you think about it this way, um, if you're a native Spanish speaker and you come to America and you speak English, you learn to speak English, you're always going to have a bit of a. There's always going to be a language barrier, no matter how long you're speaking it. You know, you're never going to be as good as someone who's natively spoken that language. Um, so, like, you have people who aren't digital natives, like your older generations. They may know how to use computers, and they may like to use computers, and they may have cell phones, but they're not native to that language, where the current generation, the youthful generation, that is their natural language. I think it says that as time progresses, we're just going to be completely engulfed with technology, and like the Google Glass, I mean, you're just pretty much your world at your eyes at the whole time. I mean, I think it, eventually we're just going to be so relied on technology, we're not even going to bother even like writing a paper or just they'll be typing it or like saying it. Previous things that have been board games are now moving into like kids games for like the Wii and stuff so because obviously the video games like publishers see the video games are more popular so they're starting to move their stuff away from you know, the board games that they used to do. Because of technology, board games will never produce the same amount of thrill as video games and the latter could only become more powerful. Moore's Law predicts that computing power doubles in magnitude every two years. The one potentially exclusive facet of board game is social. There's nothing quite like a face-to-face -face interaction filled with deception, strategy, and satisfaction that board games provide. But a video game in the not-so-distant future could accomplish this and more. Maybe in five years, we're going to have uh, systems at home capable of creating real virtual environments that we can feel immersed in, and maybe some of us won't ever want to leave. It's unclear how much longer the board game model will last. Hasbro's digital game and software content division generated $15.9 billion of revenue, while their games and puzzles generated only $1.2 billion, already a 10% drop from the year before. The numbers are grim, but the reality is that board games can do little economically in face of the modern age, especially when the entire limits of a game are enclosed within a small box. Bearing radical change, technology will soon slay its predecessors.